Okay, before we do anything else, anything else at all, I just want to make it super clear. I do not support, endorse, or indulge people who participate in pedophilia. I think that a 50-year-old dating a 20-year-old is kind of gross. I think that a 13-year-old liking a 10-year-old is disgusting. I think that Leonardo DiCaprio dating a 19-year-old is gross. I'm just here to explain why I like a pairing. And I think that what matters is the age when you meet. It's like, because I've seen this ship get a lot of hate for the age gap. And I want to put it into perspective by showing and giving a few examples of other pairings in this fandom that are 10 times worse and don't get this much hate, at least on Pinterest. For example, Cruel and you, Crowley and you, and Sam and you. To put it again into perspective, Leona and Ruggie, Ruggie's 17, Leona's 20, it's a three-year age gap. Crow, by contrast, is 30. Crowley, we don't know how old he is. He could be a thousand for all we know. And Sam is 25. Yeah, so if you're worried about maturity level, I think you should take your anger there. Now, I'm not here to say that age is just a number because clearly, as I previously demonstrated just now, not the problem. My issue here is when people complain about maturity levels. Because 16 and 19, and remember, that's when Ruggie and Leona met. 16, 19, okay. Is not that big. Not that big. I mean, certainly it depends on person to person, like your personality and stuff. But, knowing we know you know like 16 is a big deal for a reason you you're basically an adult not saying that 16 is an adult i'm saying that you and a 19 year old there's probably like a venn diagram of the things 19 and 16 year olds have in common and and those circles do touch they do touch right like what i'm saying is if a 16 and an 18 year old can be a couple in Divergent, so can a 16 and 19 year old. It's only saying, all I'm saying is if you divide, if Leona's age in half and then add seven, which is, you know, how you, dis how you discover if the person you like, what age range you should be dating, right? Ruggie's in that age range, and according to a basically official timeline compiled by a certain, by a fan, I, I don't know who that is, I'm sorry I cannot credit them, Ruggie's gonna be turning 18 pretty soon too, so. Your point? Semi-irrelevant. And again, there are other reasons to dislike this ship. Age, I don't think is a factor in this relationship. Cool? Cool. <sighs> now, let's get on to the nonsense, shall we? <sighs> I'm gonna be honest. I was not a Leona fan at first. Okay, I was, I was. I wanted him to, um, to jump my bones because he was hot and no, I'm not a furry. But then I realize he's an asshole, and then I realize I have a lot of self-respect, actually, so good on me. But 15-year-old me also believed that nobody could be single because she was stupid. 
So I decided to ship him with Ruggy on a whim from watching a ship video. Because that's the sort of woman I am. And so I decided to do that. Now, this is while I was watching Ami Yashiko's playthroughs of Twist in Wonderland. And I didn't watch any of them in order. Because again, I'm not the smartest person out there. And so once I realized I'd been watching out of order, I decided to start from the top. And while watching episode 2, chapter 14, something stirred within me. Perhaps in understanding that I had chosen correctly with this ship a dynamic that spoke to me. And I'm here today to discuss why that is. Now, the first thing it may seem is the appeal of Raggy and Leona is the whole opposites attract thing. For example, Raggy has lighter hair, Leona has darker hair, Raggy's short, Leona's tall, Raggy's poor, Leona's rich, but that's the surface level. And I think that the thing that draws a lot of people into this relationship, especially if you're like have certain dynamics you like, is just how casual it is. Now, there are a lot of pairings in Twist, obviously, and I think that perhaps the way that I approached pairings in the past is a little bit dumb. I mean, there's no evidence for a ship. You can't look for ship evidence because, well, this is a Disney game, and they're not gonna, like, confirm anything ever, objectively speaking. Except Rook, who's a walking gay pride flag, but the point, the point is, you're not gonna find anything explicit in this game. As much as you may want confirmation or want evidence, it's not gonna come. So I think the best way to look at this pairing is perhaps... The narrative and character potential between it all. And the best way to start that is by diving into Leona's and Ruggie's backstories with each other. Now, Ruggie and Leona are actually fundamentally very similar. Because they're both outcasts. Now, you can argue that most people in NRC are because it's NRC. But... Ruggie and Leona felt both very ignored and cast out by the world for things they couldn't control. Tragedy, granted, struck Ruggie at a very young age, but Leona had to deal with years of social isolation. And especially in the light of the new Taj Mahin and Mina event, it has to be stated that... Leona's pain probably goes a lot deeper than initially fought daddy issues, which he probably does have, but I don't think it's main focus. Because they both feel like outcasts, it makes a lot of sense for most people to assume that two outcasts would find solace in each other, which, funnily enough, is a basis for a lot of Leona's pairings, though I personally haven't read any Vil X Leona or Jamil X Leona fix. Hmm, maybe I should. Just just to dip my toes in. Hmm. Maybe I will. But the big appeal of Leona X Reggie, for me at least personally, is their realness, their groundedness. Again, there are a lot of pairings and twists, as I said earlier, and kind of lost the point. But a lot of, like, my pairings, at least, have, again, in my view, because this is my channel, and I can say whatever I want, have this very dramatic, grand view of their relationship. For example, as I said in my last Jomi Kali video, I 
Duke Kaleem is a big romantic, which I think fits, especially considering how sheltered he is. And I do absolutely think that most of my other pairings operate pretty much the same way. But Rocky and Leona, I think, is fair to say, probably, if they were in a relationship, wouldn't act like that. Because their relationship, their entire way to interact around each other is very friendly. Like, not friendly as in, like, you know, they're very close and, you know, buddy-buddy with each other. No, but, like, in that sense that you kind of slag off your friends, you kind of make fun of them. Like, this very casual atmosphere. It has a very casual tilt to it, which a lot of other ships that I have don't. And for a lot of people... Especially if they ship the same things I do, or they're invested in more angsty or romantic pairings, can be a real breath of fresh air for a lot of fans. But I think that the other thing that also really like intrigues people with Ruggie and Leona is that they're both very similar worldview wise i wouldn't say nihilistic necessarily but very um misanthropic basically they have a very jaded view of the people around them and the world because it treated them both very harshly as kids and as people as they grew up. Obviously, Ruggie had it a lot, lot worse. But there's a camaraderie in that. There's a sense of understanding in that. Sense of, like, you know, skinship in that sense. And again, that doesn't just apply here. But the reason why I think that this relationship really works is because Ruggie and Leona, in grand scheme of everything, kind of only have each other. Now, I'm not saying that they don't have any other friends or that any other pairing with them is invalid because I can absolutely see the potential of any pairing out there. Again, unless it's pedophilic, uh, and we already talked about that, or incestuous i can see merit in most pairings but the reason i think it works here is because viewing it from every other like perspective ruggie's social net is very wide but it doesn't go very deep you can't really tell that he's tight-knit with a lot of people in nrc because he isn't it's a spectrum of very shallow relationships because you don't really meet with anyone on the same wavelength. I think it's the same with Leona, especially considering that being house warden, people seem to worship ev worship everything he does. Now, that's not for every dorm leader, though Bill and Malia certainly do fall into that category. But I think for Leona, it's even worse because he's probably very used to people not being honest around him because he's a prince. And I think that, like, for Ruggie to be so... Ruggie, who's so, like... For Ruggie to be so blunt and so honest with him, it would be a bit intriguing for Leona, perhaps. It would be, like, a change of pace and, like, very interesting. And obviously a lot of people are blunt to Leona, which, again, points to merits in multiple ships. But Ruggie's the only one who's gotten so... who's, like, so close. Who's truly able to call Leona and his family out on their shit because he has experienced it so personally. And... I think that him and Le Leona could, and probably did, absolutely bond over everything the royal family 
and society as a whole has put them through. And they probably view most of the people at NRC as privileged, little talented, special snowflakes who got here by luck and not by hard work and have had everything handed to them. And I could absolutely see it. And for Leona to be the only person Ruggy tolerates, like, not the only person, the only rich person, my bad, uh, who Ruggy really tolerates and cares about, because Ruggy does clearly care about Leona. They clearly align on a lot of moral and, like, worldview things. Um, I really think that they would bring out, like, they're the people who I feel could bring out the best in each other. Okay, not the best, maybe, like, in general, but, like, they do enjoy each other's company. Again, they have very similar values, they have very similar views on the world, and I think that that does help, especially since I think Ruggy could motivate Leona to do a bit more. He is the thing that like, motivates Leona to do things. Aside from his, his hatred for Malleus, which is motive all its own. But, again, for Ruggie's side of things, I think that Leona, like, actually caring about the people, about the country as a whole, actually really surprised Ruggie. And again, when you first meet somebody, it really is about that sense of like intrigue and like this is kind of new and you want to experience it so i think that like that's why the ship again works because a they're they're real they're very low-key about things and they're very like similar personality wise they have some goals and they also have similar morals where it's uh, fuck anyone who isn't us, basically, <laughs> which isn't, isn't very nice, but it is another similarity that they share, that they're, again, very misanthropic and very much taught to look out for themselves and their own, which, again, isn't nice. It's not, like, a big, like, a huge fluffy ship. I do think it's, like, a relationship that, to them at least, would be a very, um... You know, it's, like, it's a high school relationship. It's, like, not a big deal. Like, or at least so they say, but it is a big deal to them, you know? And now to address the elephant in the room that's not the age cap. Um, is Ruggy an unwilling participant in this? Because a lot of playthroughs like to say, oh, yeah, Ruggy's young. I see how he could have been manipulated when in reality... He's, like, on the same page as Leona. He's, like, uh, when Leona was getting basically discovered by everyone in episode two, he was like, oh, boss, what do we do? And, like, he was ready to go down with Leona no matter what. And honestly, that, like, he didn't seem, like, guilty like Trey was in episode one at all. He didn't seem to be hesitant about it. He actually seemed quite happy to do it. And again, that probably comes from, you know, thinking that everyone at NRC is basically privileged and got there by luck, never having to struggle for anything. And even when he is dragged in, like, for example, in the fairy gala, you can tell he doesn't really particularly, like, mind. He's not super upset about it. He's also there to help Leona through with his plans of helping you out, even though Ruggy wasn't personally, like, involved there. What I'm trying to point out is that this isn't, like, a Jamil and Kaleem situation where Ruggy has to. And he doesn't even seem upset by doing most of the things he does. Like, he's a little annoyed buy it like a tiny bit but no more than you would be if your friend asked you to like do their homework and they'll pay you f for it basically now that covers why they would be attracted to each other but what's the headcanon like how do a lot of people interpret ruggy and leona because i personally notice that i have a diverging opinion from most people in the 
Leon and Raggy shipping community by saying that they were already like dating by the time that we saw them in the main story. Whereas a lot of people assumed that either they would get together after Leona disintegrated his hand, and don't worry, we will discuss it afterwards, or that, you know, they would be friends with benefits, like, before that, and then they would start dating shortly before, or something like that. Or they wouldn't even, like, get together in Night Raven at all, or it would just be pining. Who knows? But a lot of people seem to agree that there would be some level of friends with benefits relationships. So the way I think it went down from what we can piece together, like it would go down because it didn't actually go down because again, no ship is actually canon, is that Ruggy and Leona most likely just like, this is again, my personal headcanon, Ruggy was probably trying to steal something from the palace. Leona caught him, and then they met again, and they made the deal that we know they made, aka Leona's like, look, I'll do your chores. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, sorry. Fuck, fuck, I need a script. Fuck, I really need a script one of these days. Um, That basically, if Ruggy does his chores, he's gonna, like, give him some educational help. And his clothes. You know. As you do. And he was like, okay, cool. They bonded a bit. And became friends with benefits. Until they eventually hooked up. Either a bit before the second. Before the story started. Or they hooked up like during Ruggie's first year doesn't really matter but the point is that this relationship again it's the only relationship that isn't like perceived by the people in it or at least wouldn't be perceived by the people in it as oh my god this is like the love of my life this is the person who I'm gonna spend the rest of my life with because I don't think either Ruggie or Leona would really be the sort of people who would indulge in that kind of stuff. They might subconsciously want it or want it, you know, want it to be the case, but they don't, they aren't like naive enough to, or perhaps hopeful enough to make that assumption. Now to address the other elephant in the room, Leona literally dusted Ruggies hand and Ruggie came back is that an abusive toxic relationship now the reason why I don't label most uh pairings abusive is because there's a difference between abusive and toxic and I don't think a lot of people realize it like a toxic relationship is where you're incompatible, you argue a lot. An abusive relationship is where you're gaslit, where you're where like one person wants to control the other and you know, you want to isolate them from their family and friends and you keep breaking up and getting back together. And, you know, they could hit you, they could insult you. But nothing about Ruggie's or Leona's relationship, or at least from what we see, seems to be that way. Like, yeah, they do insult and jest a little with each other, like, throw jabs at one another. But it doesn't seem to be, like, serious, I, like have a serious issue with you like it's never serious insults it's just like teasing and i don't mean that in the sense of like one person gets their morals and the other one's like no nah, i'm just i'm just kidding i didn't mean it like that's not what this is it's like kind of when i call my boyfriend an idiot or when he calls me an idiot when we say something dumb like haha you're an idiot or like because you're an idiot or something like that like it's not insulting 
it's like like a joke. You're kind of like teasing, you know. That's the vibe I get from them. And because it's not a cycle, or at least most people don't interpret it as breaking up, getting back together constantly, and, you know, just the string of emotional abuse. Though I'm sure, I'm sure that there are, like, fanfics or, you know, things out there that do depict their relationship that way. I'm sure because people like to explore messed up shit. I mean, look at me. I wrote a four-chapter John McCauley kidnapping thing where, like, Kaleem's forced to marry him. <laughs> so I, 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 I also love exploring fucked up shit. Um, but no, I don't think that this relationship is abusive. And I do think that, hypothetically, if... Like, there was an apology. Leona probably did apologize. And he probably did really mean it. And him and Ruggie did talk it out. Because, again, to me, it seems... It it seems like they would have very good communication. Because, again, they had canon. And I think the likely canon of the truth is that they were friends. They did, like, talk a lot. Because they spend a lot of time together. And they have reached that point of, like, very good communication where, like, you know, they are able to talk about these things. And that would be still a huge breach of Ruggie's trust. Because, again, as I mentioned before, Leona is kind of the only person, like, rich person who's proven to care about Ruggie's like, life and conditions and everything. So it would still be a huge blow. It would still be a problem. But I do think that, unlike Jamil and Kaleem, they would actually be able to talk it out. And again, Ruggy might have not even taken it that personally, since we can see that it was mostly Leona trying to, like, not project necessarily, but he was spiraling with all his insecurities in a moment, of which is not an excuse for basically Thanos snapping somebody's arm out of existence, obviously. But, like, it wasn't because he was mad at Ruggie at the time. It was just, like, a spiral of things. And, again, I do think that they would have the good communication to talk it out. So this is overall, like, despite all appearances, despite the fact that they're both, like, morally questionable characters... It is a very healthy pairing, and I'm tired of pretending it's not. And that's all, folks. Uh, my next video will probably be either a twist lore video. Speaking of, uh, I want to show everyone a little, little prelude to what you're going to see there. So, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, recording this on my tablet was a mistake. It was a real huge... Let's just, just ditch, uh, ditch the board, okay? Because <laughs> that, uh, that was a very dumb decision, but... Yeah. Uh, there's a conspiracy board, which I tried to show. So uh, it's probably going to be that, or it's going to be my review of Crown of Midnight from Throne of Glass, because I said I would do the entire series, which means I'm going to read the fifth book, which I didn't read because I was so bored in the first chapter, I just couldn't read it. So yeah, that was my defense of Raggy and Leona and like explaining why people like it. I'm definitely going to be leaving some uh, links for some like people who want to you know, watch uh, the vignettes, you know, some people who provide that. And yeah, I'll see you guys whenever that next video comes out. So bye. And yes, I was going to record this on Valentine's Day, but I was super tired. Bye.